Hello everyone, welcome to Man Manga Boys um random video chatting time with Prof Otaku. And again, I'm I probably pointed the I, wrong way again. <laughs> we're, we're 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 changing it up. We're changing it up this time because I'm a true man manga boy, not just a fan, but I am the number did I say number one? Number I am the number one fan. I am I am the superstar of the South, what they say of the man manga boy fan. And you know, I gotta do what my fans want. They're always clamoring <laughs> me. And I was like, the number one fan is the only one I'll go on the air with. So here he is. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys didn't know, I had Prophet my secret uh, Santa. I sent him a whole bunch of stuff. Check out his video. Um, we did one a week or two ago about Yuna and the Haunted Springs. Even if you're not interested in Yuna and the Haunted Springs, uh, but you like to see two two silly boys talk about a silly thing definitely check out that video uh, even just listening to it while you're doing your showers you know you're doing your you're primping up for your big date you know you're trying to look good it really will ease the mood be a nice icebreaker because obviously your date saw that video too i mean you don't want to not know what they're talking about <laughs> so check it out stay in the loop and you'll be good to go okay that's our, our top keys of success now we're going to talk today a little bit about the manga industry and kind of what series we think are going to to start to take off and by doing that we're gonna try to take some insights from the past look to see how sales have been how things have been going i'm gonna show and fly up some pages here that i got from a few different websites like oricon um <laughs> manga uh as well as npd and oricon uh, i also have a few from icv2 as well if you guys don't know what the heck i'm saying and they just sound like a bunch of gibberish don't worry about it the graphs will be in your face and you can just ignore it if you want to, too. Because this, this is a man it. manga boy PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint. Okay. These are my. We've got two intellectuals sitting here. You have a a, a a a very a very established professional in his field, and you have a soon to be doctor. So I mean, my goodness, there's so much education sitting in the Zoom call right now. You're gonna come in here, <laughs> baby brain. You're gonna leave your big brain. Okay. That's the goal <laughs> of today's video, and you, I guarantee it, are gonna love it. All right, so let's get into it. In the past, I don't know, 2021 to 2022, okay? So fairly recently, this past year, Oricon posted a little bit of a, a sneak peek of Japan's top selling manga series. Now, these aren't gonna surprise anybody. I've got them up on the screen now for people and for Prof who doesn't have it up on his screen probably. Number one is JJK, obviously. Two, Tokyo Revengers. Three, Spy Family. Four, One Piece, should be number one, but I think they miscounted. Uh, Boku no Hero Academia. Uh, six is Kingdom, seven Blue Lock, eight Chainsaw Man, nine Mystery to Ue Nakari, which means I think no more mystery, and Kaiju number eight at number ten. Uh, only one of these titles isn't in English at this time, <clears throat> and well, guess what? That's obviously changing pretty soon. So to nobody's surprise, the one of the top ten mangas you know selling in Japan is going to get an English release. Um, and so this is a pretty good indicator of what's to come. And a lot of these titles are actually jump or shonen titles uh, with a few seinen, you know, kind of snuck in there. And I think actually, and I don't know if you know this prof, but I think Mystery to Ue Nakari is actually a shoujo. Do you know if that's right? Or am I just talking about my I don't know. I, you know, and I don't even know the series. I'm going to have to look it up. Ah, okay. So Mystery to Ue Nakari, I'm just going to give you guys a quick breakdown of it, is a, um, <clears throat> it's a mystery series um that's kind of about a um a guy who's who's accused of murders and he has to put his his skills to the testing and delve in the work and lives of police officers um he's you know trying to figure out using his insights who's the real murderer and after he clears his name which he does do you know this is in the summary i've never read it um <laughs> all he wants to do is return back to his laid back mundane lifestyle but he can't help it but, you know, be drawn back into mysteries, okay? And so he's trying to make his way through and make sense of this chaotic world that he's living in. Um, not 100% sure if this is a shoujo or not. It's got a shoujo S. It's, it's a jose. It's a jose. It's a jose. Even yeah. crazy. That, I remember, I remember people have been, this is like the hot jose for this next is, year. This, this is, is huge. Yeah. 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 This is big. So, I mean, it's definitely, I'm definitely picking it up for sure. Same. Cause I love no jose. I, jose is just such an underrated series, I think, for male adult readers. I pick up a lot of Jose. I've probably not read one single series. So let me tell you that this series is 
is probably going to start, you know, kickstart this whole genre. So if you guys, um, I think Banana Fish is technically shoujo beat, but it's it's kind of like a Jose elements as well. Is that correct? Or would you it's kind of like a mix. I mean, yeah. it definitely is defined as shoujo beat, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys are probably going to start to see this series, this genre start to kick off a little bit thanks to this title. Um, so be on the lookout for this series coming out. Uh, it's published by Seven Seas later this year. Uh, a little bit more in the past here, and this one, uh, let's see, is the the yearly sales of 2020. So we're skipping 21, I guess, here. Um, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Demon Slayer, was number one. Um, Kingdom was number two. One Piece 3, Haiku 4, JJK number 5, you can kind of see how things got shifted around, but it's the same title so far. For the Promise Neverland is number 6, 7 is the Quintessential Quintuplets, 8, My Hero Academia, 9, Spy Family, and 10 was Attack on Titan with Volume 32 just coming out. Um, and this is just a kick to the flash, I'm not even going to read it, I'm just going to show the screenshot here off on the screen. Uh, but it's just like your usual, you know, back in 2011, 2012, you know, the One Piece, Naruto. Back in the old school days, this is what was popular. So you can kind of see how these trends make sense. 90% of them are shown on jump titles. Now, something that I found very interesting, and you might find this interesting as well, Prof, but, um, and I don't know if you looked into this, but ebooks are completely, well, I, I shouldn't say completely, but largely different. Uh, for example, on this website called Manga Zenken, which is a, a, a digital, you know, ebook website where you can go online in Japan and buy these series. We've got number one for the number uh, November 2020 monthly rankings being Tokyo Manji Revengers, Hunter Hunter, Fable the Second Contract, Aoshi, which is the the soccer uh, series yep. that's still not out in English, which is kind of shocking to me. Monster Eight, which is Kaiju Number Eight, Black Clover, Life of a Reincarnated Sage in Another World. Uh, acquiring a second class, blah, 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 blah. Chainsaw Man, Zatch Bell 2, and, and a bunch of other Chainsaw Man titles with Blue Exorcist being the next actual series that's unique, uh, which uh. is huge. This does not at all hardly reflect the, the previous list. I mean, the only same titles here are um, Chainsaw Man, Tokyo, Revengers, Monster 8. That's it. I mean, we don't even have One Piece on here. No Spy Family. It's kind of wild to see how different the two platforms can be between physical and digital manga. So it kind of makes it difficult to to kind of uh, predict what's going to be happening and where, since the two mediums follow completely different styles for whatever reason. Um, <clears throat> but I just found that to be quite, quite odd. You know, the fact that we could have such a drastic difference. I mean, truthfully, Zatch Bell 2 is one of the best stories ever. I mean, Prop doesn't read it because... <laughs> He's an insane Because it's, it's out of print. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> this is to Moonlight Zatch Bell 2, and uh, Zatch Bell 1 gets a reprint. You know, that's the whole point of this video at the end of the day. So Zatch Bell 1, my number one returning manga, 2023. Called it. Bye. <laughs> no, I'm <Yeah>. just kidding. <laughs> I do think it is going to get a comeback, though, this year. Do you have any thoughts on Zatch Bell coming back, Prof? Have you been following any trends? Or I don't. Like I don't think it. I don't think it's going to get republished. Or, yeah, no. No, mm -hmm. I just think that, you know, when I think about older series that are not going to get reprinted, so like GTO, Zatch Bell, you know, s series like that, they're just not going to see another print run because of literally the trends that we talked about with physical manga mm -hmm. in 2020 and 2021. You know, there's a reason why Shonen Manga or Battle Shonen, Shonen Jump, why they're so popular. And it's just because that's just what sells and mm -hmm. it's gonna be like that in 2023 and even with the revival of some of and the reprints of some really really popular series so we saw emma reprints we saw uh the pandora hearts box set get reprinted we saw what else did we see get reprinted that um or like redone uh no longer human mm -hmm. uh that slice of life manga with the robot girl from 95 that got at first english print for the first time in the deluxe omnibus from seven seas yes for people like us yes like we want that type of stuff are they going to sell on the shelf for the normal manga consumer absolutely not so I think we're just a vocal my, uh, vocal minority because we're in this whole manga tube scene or whatever. But in terms of what we're going to see in 2023, it's just going to be more or less the same. We're going to see um, a lot of the, you know, 
of the stuff that's currently being published being prominent. And it was really interesting because when I did my video on the state of the manga industry in 2022, I found an article from the Viz president in the Yen Press, like director of operations. And they said because of the you know pandemic issues with the printing and the production plants being diminished and not being able to request more printing opportunities for their series, they personally were prioritizing the ongoing stuff. And now we're just seeing reprints of Slam Dunk, Yu Yu Hakusho, the Shoujo Beat titles. Those are now just finally getting reprinted after a couple years being out of print. And I think that that's why these series, these Shonen Jump series are popular now and why they're gonna continue to be popular because that's just what sells. Mm. And that makes sense. I, I largely agree with what you're saying, but because I agree with what you're saying ex pretty much to a point is exactly why I think Zatch Bell will get a reprint. Um, so Shaman King, I don't know if you've been following their releases, um, you know, lately, but Shaman King is getting to the end of their reprint uh, from Kodansha. Kodansha is going to be printing Shaman King Flowers. I don't know if they're going to be printing the other series of Shaman King that never came out that were spinoffs. Um, but they have said they're at least doing them digitally. So fingers crossed we get a physical release as well. But that being said, we need Kodansha to have some sort of other omnibus three-in-one -one series. I feel like anyways. I mean, probably they have enough. They've got Seven Deadly Sins. They've got, I don't even know what else, Fire Force coming out in omnibus format, everything else. Well, would they everything have to the buy the, would they have to buy the license from Viz or does Viz not have the license anymore? Um, so this is a topic that is a little murky and one that I have talked about a little bit in my channel in the past. But to get everybody else up to speed, um, so whatever happened with Zatch Bell's issues and licenses in the past is Viz actually lost, or not Viz, but the the main company in Japan lost pages from the creators. Um Zatch Bell chapter count and he had to redo the pages. He was pissed. He sued the company. He won the lawsuit and he said, I'm fucking done with you guys. So Zatch Bell was like just at the end of the series or, or getting to the end of it by the time the lawsuit ended. He finished publishing the whole series through them, stopped the anime. He stopped releasing his own manga through them and discontinued uh, the sales in Japan, even I'm pretty sure. Uh, and so what we got in English is a result of what they were allowed to print because they are also you know, in deals with, with Shueisha at the time. And so Viz actually doesn't have the license to Zatch Bell anymore. And I believe it's it's Kodansha who has it at this point. Um, the, main the main author, I think his name is Makoto Raiko, something like that. Uh, he actually is publishing Zatch Bell 2 all the way through Bookwalker right now. It's not, in, I don't think it's in print really? yet, but it's all coming out through Bookwalker. Wow. And so okay. each chapter comes out once a month. And they are releasing, uh, they released a Kanzaban, which is an omnibus format in Japan very recently. Well, it probably wasn't too recent, but that same format is being released in, in Spanish right now. So Mexico, Spain have access to this newer release of Zatch Bell. This is exactly why I think we are going to get that, that same edition printed in English. A, it already exists. B, it exists in multiple languages, not ours yet, not English. Um, and C, Zatch Bell's coming back pretty big. Just like I listed off on that list of digital manga, you know, Zatch Bell's up there. And I feel like it would be kind of insane for Kodansha to not jump on it. I mean, probably not as insane as Kodansha was for not jumping on Tokyo Revengers, you know, physicals. Right. I can't believe they gave that to Seven Seas to this day. But, you know, that's what happened. And I think uh, Zatch Bell 2, they're not going to let it slip out of their hands. I think they're going to publish it with those exact same releases that Spain's getting, and they are going to take it and run with it and go from Zatch Bell 1 to Zatch Bell 2, uh, since the creator wants nothing to do with the deals he had in the past. So it's no way going to Viz. Um, I think Kodansha is, is its new home, and it is a shonen battle manga, so I think it's ripe for the taking, and it's going to be well, largely popular. Let me ask you this. In mm -hmm. 2023, which publisher do you think is going to have the most potential to publish older series, either as a reprint or like to bring new licenses of older series to the US? Which publisher do you think is going to take the cake in 2023? Seven Seas. Yeah, me too. No That's question. what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why do you say that? Seven Seas is reckless, in my opinion, with their license captures. They get anything and everything they can get their hands on. And they dig deep. I don't know if you guys have seen 
how many books Seven Seas released like last week, but they posted that it was around like 23 volumes out in one week of different series. And I was like, Jesus effing A. You know, like that is insane. Nobody's buying all those series. You know, each person might buy one of those series and, you know, their series are getting bought up. Maybe. I don't really know. But I don't even know how they have, forget about the translation. I don't even know how they have enough printers to print all those volumes. No, know? I don't know. I don't know how they're doing it either. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You know what makes Seven Seas stick out to me more than even like Yen Press, for example, is their uh, reader survey. Oh, really? Yeah, they send that Have out. you ever? Yeah, every month they say type and i've done it every month because i'm mm -hmm. trying to get i'm trying to get them to release the omni the the sequel to blue giant because we got these omnibuses and i want the sequel series mm -hmm. and but i fill it out every month and they're always like which webtoon do you want give us a manga that you want give us a light novel that you want and they ask it every month and they have done a great job with listening to to those recommendations i honestly think that's how we got tokyo revengers yeah, you're probably right. I, I actually I guarantee that's how we got Tokyo Revengers because people kept typing into that survey, hey, we want Tokyo Revengers. And I bet you the CEO of Seven Seas is like, we it doesn't matter how much we pay for this license, we have to buy the license right mm -hmm. right now. Because like mm -hmm. that's on every single survey, you know? And so I think that is gonna be a true indicator of uh where Seven Seas is going with licenses in the future. And I think that's like really promising, but also Speaking of Seven Seas, I am very concerned with some of the printing issues that they've been having recently. Did you hear about what happened with that novel release that they were doing with uh, the Volume 4 Special Edition? Uh, no. Okay, so they have this, like, novel series um, from a Chinese novelist. Um, how something, something, something. Uh, I don't know if you ever have seen it in the bookstore or whatever, but uh, it's very popular, apparently. Sure, sure, sure. And they had a volume four special edition that was supposed to come out and they did a single print run apparently and they oh. didn't print enough they didn't they didn't even fulfill the pre-orders and then amazon like did not get their ship amazon europe did not get the shipment from seven seas so they had to cancel all those pre-orders for these people who have ordered it for months oh, and seven man. seas on twitter was like yeah we're not printing anymore like what? we already sent them out and like hundreds of people were like wait a second like i pre-ordered this like you're not gonna fulfill my pre-order like oh. you said that if we pre-order we're gonna get it it's like a special edition and it was a one print run and so that kind of opened my eyes to like you know maybe seven seas is doing too much too fast mm. because i think they're gonna they're biting off more that they can chew we're gonna see big issues in 2023 with actual printing issues i i don't know i i want to be wrong but maybe they'll prioritize things a little bit better but that was that was on twitter last week um or a couple of days ago and i was like that's really bad that's really, really bad, bad that they couldn't that they couldn't even they didn't get the right numbers and they didn't print the right numbers for the pre-orders and then they just screwed a bunch of people over and said tough luck ah that's bad. i don't know that's really bad that's really bad holy shit i yeah i don't i don't have a twitter so i don't ever pay attention to those things so i had no idea that is yeah fucking, was that's huge that's humongous yeah so, yeah Prof and I, uh, I think I speak for us both when I say we're big fans of Seven Seas and we're, we're, we're also the biggest probably haters of Seven Seas. They, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I buy a lot of Seven Seas books. I don't think there's one publisher I bought more manga from this, this year than Seven Seas. Or at the very least, maybe not volumes, but at least different titles. Yeah. I've got like an entire bookshelf of Seven Seas. But like the, this is my number one for sure but but seven seas in kodansha are probably neck and neck for number two uh for me anyways and like they released some really good titles that i would never even think to to bring over to the u.s and i think you're right i think they use these reader surveys to figure that out um and it's like great on them for doing that and listening to the public but <laughs> there's been you know obviously i think we talked about before uh, this is just becoming like the seven seas like <laughs> discussion channel <laughs> Anyway, well, I'll t I will I will say this. This is my first hot take of 2023. Yeah, I think that Seven Seas is going to implode. Yeah. I think there, something's going to go drastically wrong with them, whether it be the worker strike that is still happening, 
which we kind of like let let go away. But they're still in negotiations mm. with the they they allowed the workers to form a union, and rightfully so yeah. because with the way that company is growing, it blew my mind that they only had like forty full time employees or something crazy I like that. I couldn't believe that either, and I couldn't I believe there couldn't wasn't believe- already a union. I was like, Wait I just a couldn't. Minute. But I was like, I was like, this is a this is one of the top four major manga publishers in the United States. You only have forty workers, and some of them are just freelance. They're not even like contractually like locked in with Seven Seas like full time. Mm-hmm. They're just on con. I was blown away. I I fully support the union just to make sure that they get the the right compensation for the amount of work that they're doing. But with all these licenses that Seven Seas are getting, and with and then with their conglomerate of isekai stuff that just doesn't sell, I mean, I just think they're gonna absolutely implode. So that's my first hot take. Because with and with that printing issue, I think that's gonna start bleeding into other things as well, that they're not gonna be able to fulfill pre-orders or anything like that. The second thing that I think is gonna happen is I think Yen Press is gonna become uh, either the second best publisher in the game or maybe even close to the number one publisher in the game. Do you have any any thoughts on backing that up? Because I think like you could not be more wrong in your life. <laughs> really, really. No, yeah. I, I think Viz. You know, in terms of you know, they got shown and jumped. So like they'll be number one. But I Every think time. Yen Press. I think Yen Press will be the number two. Mm-hmm. I really do, because they are printing the manga that people want. They're giving us the reprints that people want, which is fantastic. Um, there's nothing that's in like digital jail like Kadansha digital jail. Now they don't get those licenses like Kadansha does. I don't know how many things that Yen Press has locked up, but Kadansha has lots of licenses, but they're not doing anything with them. So that's mm-hmm. a big issue. But um, I think with the acquisition or the the building of Eze Press, that Korean manhwa branch that they have, and the way that it has exploded in the last month and a half. I think Yen Press is starting to uh, set itself up to be a major player in the game in terms of licenses, uh, in terms of creating their niche in the market with the Korean manhwa, because it is popular. It is really popular, whether we read it or not. I wasn't a big Webtoon reader until I started seeing all this stuff start to happen. But um, I think that they're going to have that niche in the market with their quality control and their ability to get the reprints of older series out in a timely manner compared to all the other publishers. I think they're going to be a major player in the game. But why yeah. do you think that's a why do you think that's a hot take? Why do you I, think I think wrong? that's a I think that's a no way Jose territory. And the reason is actually for a similar reason that you think they are going to take off. I think Yen Press is going to slowly start to disappear. Probably not this year. Probably not the next year. But at some point down the road, they're going to trickle away. And instead of Yen Press, 100% Eze Press. Or whatever their, however you say their Webtoon um, branding. I think they're going to go full force Webtoon. Because they are pretty early adapters to it, actually. They, uh, last year, announced a ton. Or maybe it was earlier this year. Announced a ton of Webtoons. I actually think Yen Press is going to start moving away from manga and moving towards webtoons their manga sales and series that they grab they they don't jump for these big expensive license typically um you know kakeguri or kakeguri is one of their their bigger titles these days um but i toilet think... bound toilet bound Hanako, toilet bound is a big one yeah yeah yep. um yeah pandora they... hearts pandora hey, hearts. study of vanitas 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 is probably uh their their biggest seller right now if i had to guess so we got laid back camp um yeah that one's pretty popular actually but laid back camp well, is so an- slow to release man yo yeah yo tuba it's but that's also on hiatus so um slow. and they're and they're light novels i mean they're they are the light novel game i mean oh, that's their thing too yeah, yeah. oh yeah I, I think every light novel is published through yen press with very few w- from seven seas like mishoku tensei classroom of the elite yeah um berserker <laughs> gluttony but most of them are from yen on their their light novel branch mm-hmm. so So I think they are, you know, even further, you know, kind of promoting what I'm thinking is I think they're going to move away from manga and go to these other mediums. Light novels, which you're right. Now that I'm thinking about it, they've been killing with light novels. Spice and Wolf, they had that big release with it. And it was, it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Well, they have that, they have the new release, the certain magical index, the big, Mm -hmm. they're doing the the, the big, big one, just like the Spice and Wolf. I'm definitely picking that up. I'm I'm buying that too. I can't even fucking read. I'm buying it. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I sold my Spice and Wolf. I sold sold it like. 
Yeah, I sold it like three months ago, actually, wow. because I opened it because I was looking for stuff to sell. And I opened it and I was like, my blind ass can't read this. Like, it's like the smallest print. Small. I have to put it up to here just to see it. So I, yeah, I sold it off. I couldn't. It's, I couldn't. it's for display purposes only. It will exactly. 100%. And I, 100%. Yeah. If I had the, uh, the, the numbered version of it, like the mm. collector's numbered version, then I would have kept it. But no, forget it. I just decided to sell it. I do want to ingest Spice and Wolf, but I'd rather just get the single volumes and have it, you know, bigger print and be able to read it. So. I'm getting it in the manga format. Ain't no way. Eventually, news. Eventually, I'm gonna get it. You know, I've got I've got a few things here, a few things there to read first. But you know, <laughs> it's it's definitely something on my my bucket list I want to grab because Spice and Wolf here nothing but good things about. But this is kind of part of what I'm talking about, like with Yen Press. I I can't imagine their manga game sticking around too too much. I I was looking at my collection the other day and I was like, damn, Seven Seas. I think I might even have more Square Enix no uh, manga than than even um, Yen Press at this point. And I've been collecting Yen Press since like 2006. Like, take a look at your manga collection sometime, and you guys Just at home look. do the same, dude. Like, the amount of Yen Press I have is minuscule compared to my other publishers. It's, like, not even close to Kodansha. It's not even close to Viz. It's not even close to Dark Horse. And Dark Horse has even less titles than I can I even guess, name, you know? But, I mean, you know, I'm thinking Barakamon, Yotsuba. Um, you know, they've got the new Kaguya-sama manga manga because manga coming out oshi no, oshi no koi yeah I'm that's that coming out in january yep. Yep. Uh, you know uh you got chain soldier over there um toilet bound is still going strong mm -hmm. um what else do i got let's yeah it's seven c's um seven i mean seven. i don't know <laughs> like i most of the all of the titles i've picked up from yen press i really yeah, enjoyed run on your new totals. legs this they're you know they're very qual. That's why that's why I think that they're gonna stay in the game because they are not publishing a conglomerate of crap like Seven Seas. It's the exact like, opposite you know, mentality of Seven Seas. It's the, they are, but but w what they do spend their money on is on quality titles that they mm -hmm. know will sell. So yep. laid back camp, Oshino Koi, you know stuff like that that we really want, or they'll invest their money into getting reprints of classic titles. The K on uh, reprinted yeah, uh, collectors. That, that's yeah. really it's a really nice addition. I'm actually gonna double dip and probably grab that very soon. Oh, um, nice. But but you know, I think they're doing all the right things, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. I'm surprised you say they're gonna move away from their manga titles because I think their manga licenses are some of the strongest licenses out there. They're they're strong titles, but there's not a lot of them, and I think they have more opportunities and venues going to these well, these webtoons I, I feel I like agree. their webtoons are I, even better easy press will become mm -hmm. the main player the in the game number one no question in one year yeah. one in one year because just look at their spring 2023 announcement oh, it's so i mean i even bad. oh oh my gosh like mm -hmm. and i called it too i and when i got the the press kit from easy press and i did that video unboxing of it mm -hmm. right when they were just starting and i said i said in the video in the intro i said please for the love of god print us the horizon in english i like and i called it because Ooh. literally one month later yeah. one month later uh yen press announced that they were doing the horizon and they even messaged me on instagram they're like <laughs> oh we'll send it they were like they're like hey we saw the video like we'll let the team know about the horizon and then they announced it and oh, i was like dude damn. that was that must have been me like i got that title in the in print because like dude and so like they are they're killing it they're putting out the manhwa titles that like people really they really, really want, want. Yeah. and i think that's great mm -hmm. and it's gonna be and that was something that tokyo pop was trying to do and it just you know yeah. didn't really work no um but they, they were kind of ahead of their time in that respect but what can you do manga you know manga and and you know popularity run in these waves and if you jump in a wave too early man you can't ride it you know the wave ride right. too. <laughs> I, I think Yen Press is, and it started with solo leveling. That was what started it because when they announced solo leveling, everybody's like, whoa, like this mm -hmm. is huge. I can't Big believe time. we're getting a webtoon in physical format. And then Yen Press is like, and you even look at the list. I even looked at that list of the top selling uh, US manga from October or whatever, mm -hmm. um, or mm -hmm. just US comics, graphic novels. Solo leveling was like in the top 10, like two of the volumes were in the top 10. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and so 
that Who was I think the that was the catalyst I think for Yen Press to go. We should start a branch. We should mm -hmm. start a branch and start doing Manwa because people want this and nobody's doing it. So. Yeah. Yeah, Lore of the Olympus is like apparently is super popular and so leveling right up there with it. Those are right. like probably the top two uh, most popular web comics right now, at least sales wise. Sure, um, yeah. Which if most people probably aren't following the sales, but that's that's you know a trend that's been kind of uh, documented by this website called ICV2. Um, and you aren't going to believe this, you know, viewers at home. But the U.S. top sales, at least physical from November and October, are all pretty similar to Chainsaw Man, Shuna's Journey, Demon Slayer, um, My Hero. I can't believe Shuna's Journey is yeah, that, up there. That was kind of shocking for me, too. I was I was so happy because that, that should be a huge eye-opener for everybody, every publisher out there. Hey – we can put we can post this obscure series from Hayao Miyazaki from back in the 70s a yeah. one shot and it will sell and it's going to sell well even though it's like super it is like not even close to like flashy shonen jumpiness like you know Onichan manga like it's like hey we're gonna make a really nice mystical studio Ghibli type of manga and well, it works who publishes great. it the publisher for that yeah yeah first second yeah first second publishing it's which like, i never heard of freaking dark horse entering the race exactly like who's right. ever heard of first second they i think post mostly like kid books you know well, I, like me, heist and uh, seek is what i'm seeing improv science comics um Pranula. do you have do you have it do i do have, have it, it? No, i don't even have it you, you should it? grab it. I need you to should grab, grab it. it. Yeah, it is phenomenal. It's a great read. It's it, yeah. it, it is a great read. It, it's not perfect, but there's lots of beautiful symbolism in here to like Japanese economics and like uh, uh, integration of outside resources into the homeland mm -hmm. or whatever. It's beautiful. The artwork in here is gorgeous. And the release from First Second is phenomenal as well. Beautiful hardcover, just a beautiful release. And then the afterwards at the end, they like do a whole like five page essay about why they did this and what the importance of this work was. And I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. So right. I hope that this is the start of number one, small publishers coming out of the ashes and giving us something really great. Mm -hmm. But number two, giving us these really like cool things that like really wouldn't see the light of day in 2022 but now that they gave it a chance hey look it actually did sell pretty well so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah and like a few other series real quick that that talk off in you know the past three months of the u.s um you know kaiju number eight toilet bound hanaku kun which we were talking about earlier komi can't communicate which probably pretty obvious to most people at this point Dragon Ball I think Super. they were buying that for kindling. Yeah, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, you know, the big winter storm is coming, so everybody yeah, got their Target excited. exclusive box sets. Yeah, I got my blanket, <laughs> so I don't need to burn mine yet. But <laughs> And Demon Slayer and One Punch Man. Those are all, like, the, the main selling titles. I was pretty shocked to see Dragon Ball Super in there because I feel like the only person who reads it on the goddamn internet is me. <laughs> but <laughs> I love Dragon Ball Super. I think it. I think it's amazing. Um, I don't think it's quite as good as Z, but the, the newest arc with Goten and Trunks has some good promise. Anyways, um, so yeah, it's kind of wild to see these titles and, and random series pop up out of nowhere that you just would never expect, which makes it difficult to kind of talk about where we think this is going to go. All right, so, Prof, what do you think, you know, now that we're talking about smaller publishers, let's move to bigger publishers, okay? We were talking about Yen Press, we're talking about Seven Seas, we're talking about random titles and publisher companies that you know came out of nowhere what do you think's going to take off with with our main two or three series publishers you know what do you think's gonna what's going to be popular with viz what do you think's going to be popular with dark horse kadancha what do you think well okay so with hmm, with viz all the shonen jump stuff coming out that are, that is going to be coming out next year. I think mm. it's just going to be high watch. Uh, you don't which think there's going to be any big shakeup or anything like that? No, I don't think so. I don't think, and I also think that Viz is not going to give us a license that's going to blow our minds. Mm. Uh, and I think that the Anime Expo was kind of a big indicator to me of like, hey, I don't think Viz is in the game of giving us the big hammer throw. So like Oshino Koi from Yen Press. 
uh seven c's giving us like the the new printings of like really really cool old titles that we never heard of before or like the superstar reprints like kadansha did of no longer human you know we're not gonna see that from viz i think viz is just really good about just like hey we're gonna just keep publishing the shonen jump titles and then we know it's gonna sell well like we're gonna put out witch watch and it's gonna be great and uh, we'll put out the other family one that's been going on recently in there, you know, and they're just going to just do that. And they're just going to ride that wave. I can't think of any Viz signature manga on the top of my head. That's blowing my mind. That's going to like get that other than um, the uh, Toski Fujimoto one. Uh, goodbye. Eerie. Eerie, yeah. You know, yeah. that's the only one that I can think of that's going to be big from Viz. But uh, other than that, they just they just never impress me like with their licenses. I just know that it's going to be consistent, but mm -hmm. I don't get excited from them anymore. Yeah, just totally mainstream these days. I agree. I don't really think there's going to be any huge shakeup. I think, you know, still JJK, CSM, Spy Family, they're going to ride the wave. You know, I definitely think Trojan X has a lot of, you know, chance yeah. to to big to be big but that's not anyone like that's not any hot take or anything like that that's no surprise to anyone um, and i think it's gonna and it'll be and i think it will be you know anybody's yeah, gonna to grab anything well. from the tokyo go yeah, yeah basically all the series that got released this past year or have been kind of going on mm -hmm. they're just gonna keep doing the same thing yeah you know jjk's kind of wrapping itself up black clover's wrapping itself up uh, Don to Don is just starting. They're going to start releasing part two of Chainsaw Man. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're seeing all these Shonen Jump, you know, spy families right in the middle. So that ain't going to change. Sakamoto Days, Kaiju number eight are in the middle. So that's not going to change this year. So yeah. in terms of just overall sales from Viz, they don't need to do anything. They can sit on their behind and collect all the royalties basically for this year. So mm -hmm. I don't think we'll see anything special, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, and I asked, I put up a, a quick question on the community tab of um, this past week too because i knew we were going to record this video i just kind of wanted to see what anyone said about it but you know my wife who and me they were like you know they said don did on akane uh, banashi which uh is a you know calligraphy-esque manga by shonen jump obviously uh and kaiju number eight are going to continue to trend upwards they think and they think because akane banashi is, is new it's going to be a newer hit i don't know if you've heard too much about that one but i agree i think that was going to be kind of a surprise hit that a lot of people haven't been noticing you can see my cat this is ebony um and then Heartless Weeb was saying, you know, Redo of a Healer is probably going to take off. And I was like, oh, shit, dude, Redo of Healer got a manga announced? He's like, nah, the second season's going to be fire. <laughs> so, you know, if, if, I was like, okay, thanks, man. But, like, if, if Redo of a Healer does get a manga, I do think it's going to be huge. Uh, but, again, that's not a series I imagine Viz printing. That is... <laughs> No, that's, that's a, a seven ship, C's. That is a ghost ship that's a, title yeah. easily. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Viz would never touch anything like that. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, most people, I think, are, are thinking the same thing. I don't think they're they're expecting any huge shakeup. I don't think they're expecting, you know, um, anything wild to occur. You know, just like we were saying earlier, do not say mystery. I think is going to be huge again. This is kind of shocking to me that it's not a Viz Sig title. I thought for sure this was going to be a. Um, what is a, it a, a seven C's, c's? It, it's a seven c's title yeah see but that's what i'm saying is that i i think that with a jose because it's a jose title mm -hmm. when was the last one i can't think of any substantial jose titles that were published under the viz line i don't know would you consider drip drip a jose line oh i don't even know if it's labeled as a jose yeah. is it I, I don't know it could be because it does kind of run in a similar vein to that it's also kind sure. of like a seinen but it doesn't follow the same was... send in tropes as well. So it's kind of in between, in my opinion, anyways. It, it's just yeah. that line. Uh, but that is probably the most recent Viz release that I can think of anyways. That That's anywhere close Let's to see. a Joe's Say manga. It's a it, seinen. Yeah. So that makes it's sense. It's a seinen, technically, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's that's pretty much it. And, you know, it being a seinen makes me, you know, makes any more sense to your point, you know, that that it wouldn't, um, you know, go through I just... Viz right and mm. i think that as the manga community continues to expand in 2023 we're seeing this kind of huge gap 
we have the new manga readers that love the Shonen Jump stuff, like we all did when we first started joining, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the manga community. So you're gonna grab your Demon Slayer box sets and blah 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 and call it a day. Yeah. And then you then you have the people like us, and I'm not putting us on a pedestal, but the more experienced readers who just want something really kind of out there something super different and mm -hmm. viz is not the one to put the hammer down and say no. we're gonna take a risk which blows my mind because i really do think they have enough capital to take a risk because i think the track record has shown in the last year that these titles that are like super risky to put out mm -hmm. have been doing very well like hayao miyazaki shooter's journey this has Viz Media written all over it. <laughs> I couldn't you know? believe that wasn't a Viz Media print. When I saw I, it me coming out, I thought for sure it was Viz Sig. And then right. when I was like, oh, first, second publisher? Who the heck is that? <laughs> yeah. Like, what? It's like, that's not a Viz title, are you sure? So, yeah, right. no, I'm 100% there with you. But, yeah, Viz doesn't take any risks. They, they know what works, and they're going to keep using what works. Um, and, and that's you know, fine. I don't have an issue with that. Exactly. I'm just, as a consumer, I don't care. And especially because I don't like Shonen Jump that much anymore either. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, you know, it just nothing excite, excites me from them. I love Shonen Jump, even to this day. I'll never stop being Wow. Child. Never stop. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I almost have every single title by Shonen Jump that's been released in English. So cool. You don't want to go steal the Omnibus Collectors? Uh... Dude, all I need to do is take like uh, from him like a few Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, a few Yu-Gi-Oh! GXs, and uh, then I'm pretty much good. Oh, I think I'm missing a few wow. Ds too. But that's it. Just these that's random Yu-Gi-Oh! titles. Yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty close to having them all. So I'm really hyped for that. Uh, Very cool. Yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. But anyways... Uh, you know, and Kodacha, I feel like, is kind of a little bit more risky than Viz. I really feel like they are starting to spread out kind of wider with their releases these days. I mean, we saw Sweat and Soap release, you know, box sets and things like that. They also still ride the Shonen line with, with titles like Fire Force and Fairy Tail. Uh, you know, they've got a few other titles that, you know, you wouldn't expect. They even had Quince come out last year as well, or maybe two years ago now. Hard to remember yeah. at this point. But, like, they, they aren't staying in that one genre, you know? They, they kind of float around a little bit. Uh, sure. They I even have a few isekais, too. Not many, but I don't even think Viz has too many isekais. Now that no. I'm thinking about it, I don't think No, they I don't think any. Viz has any. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. they have that, the uh, Xing Lai or Shanghai Frontier. Genre La uh, Frontier from Kodasha. That's it. One so of my that's a... favorite titles, by the way. It is so, that was so a new one. good. Yeah. Have yeah. you started reading that yet? I have not. I haven't oh. bit the bullet. I, I've been hesitant because I heard mixed feelings about it. So there's nothing yeah. mixed about it. The only thing mixed really? about it, yeah, is I think is it's the, good. Yeah, is the, the opinions okay. of people who are saying it's not good. That's what's sure. mixed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so uh, with with Kadansha, I think Kadansha, I don't think of them for the new licenses. Uh, mm. I can't even think of many off the top of my head that really blow my mind. The only ones that I can really think about are uh, Blue Lock is the yeah, only that one huge. that kind of just jumps out to me. Uh, in terms of like new stuff that I've picked up this year, 2022 from Kadansha, I don't think I've picked up anything except for Blue Lock. Everything else has been ongoing stuff. So Grand Blue Dreaming. Um, oh yeah, and the, another, another the, the Blue title. Period, mm -hmm. Blue Period, Blue stuff like so that. Good. Yep. But but I th I think of Kadansha as the redos of old editions. So the new omnibuses that are coming out. You know, AOT and uh, Number Six and Fire Force and Origami, the, th the three in one omnibuses. Oh. And so, so we got those. So I just think that they're, that's what I think of Kadansha as, is getting us new publications of series that they already have. Mm. So is that good? Yeah, I guess. You know, they have the new Vinland Saga hardcover leatherback or whatever. Why? <laughs> which is like, um, you know. Any other series. They should have picked any other series. Right, I, I know. You know, we don't, it's oh. like, if you're going to treat, if you're going to give us these beautiful hardcovers because with the silent voice hardcovers bravo you know fantastic like let's go in that direction but don't give it to us with vinland saga yeah. because everybody and their mother already has vinland saga not only that but vinland saga is only available in a hardcover nobody has right. a paperback version so there's not really a huge upgrade you know to it it's, right there it's is like not. i'm gonna go from a hardcover 
to a hardcover, or I'm just going to stick with the hardcovers. And the only difference is that, yeah, it's going to be a bigger print. I think it's going to be the silent voice size printing, which would be really nice. And it's going to be leather bound, which is fine. But like, does it justify me trying to sell my Vinland Saga hardcovers at a loss Mm -hmm. and then redo the whole? No, no, it doesn't. Not for me ever to release them too. Oh Forever, yeah, you know? forget it. It just doesn't make any sense because by the time those hardcover deluxe editions, the leather ones catch up to mm-hmm. the two in one hardcovers, then they're gonna have to release them simultaneously. Yeah. Then they're really gonna be screwed because they're not gonna be making any money at all. They're gonna have mm-hmm. be, they're not gonna know which one to print more of. Yeah, they're gonna I, cannibalize I mean, their own sales. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's exactly when I saw that. I was like, they just they just shot themselves in the foot. Yeah, they're gonna re- they're just diversifying, slow, and they're not gonna go anywhere with them, or they're gonna release them too fast, and it's gonna eat the other one's sales. Hey, there's there's right. not any good any good answer about that, and they should never I, release it. I don't get why they did that when there's other things that they could have done. Like Anything give else. us a new give Anything us a new else. printing of Astro Boy, but I think Dark Horse has that title, so I mean. Oh. Yeah, you know. Astro Boy would be great. Astro Boy would be an excellent one. Even if Dark Horse does have it. Dark Horse, I don't even know if they still have it anymore. Because I think they do. Okay. If they do, they, they should print more. <laughs> but they have They it. just I apparently they re just reprinted the omnibuses of Astro Boy. Oh really? Do you have that? Which omnibuses? I did not I have the singles. I have the pocket manga version. Yeah, I thought I'd seen that in yeah. your collection. So I've got yeah. the the omnibuses. Um they're they're bad they're good you know to have for astro boy because they were easy to get at the time but the they're singles are bad the singles are the singles are great yeah super small and and they and they're honestly the printing isn't bad you can still read it like it's good i like yeah. the singles so it's a smaller version it's similar to the um Elf and Lee. Lone Wolf and Clyde. Oh, Elf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those, the bricks. Yeah, it, they're this, that same thickness, but they're like the width of the um, Lone Wolf and Cub omnibuses. So they're yeah. they're smaller yeah. too. So sure. the spines. I mean, I haven't read mine yet, but people say that the spines crease really easily. Um, people say that like it's really hard to read it because it's smaller. You know, the same thing that you get with the Lone Wolf and Cub releases. Uh, right. which is which is a shame because Astro Boy is obviously one of the legendary series that in my right. opinion Dreams Viz Sig released this you know in some edition well but. and it's, when we speak about series that are older that like publishers need to take a chance on mm-hmm. I would think that with the popularity and the success of Shuna's journey I would just love to see a re-release of uh, Astro Boy or Phoenix or oh, Blackjack. Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. Is one of those one. three in a really nice edition. I think it would sell great, and I don't know why anybody hasn't done that yet. It just doesn't yeah. make sense. It doesn't make you sense. Know? Yeah, I feel like if it's not up for grabs, it must be because someone else has it, and whoever has it, why aren't you doing anything with it? It is guaranteed free money. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But mm-hmm. yeah. But speaking of Dark Horse, let's gravitate towards Dark Horse. Do you have any opinions on what Dark Horse may do in 2023? Yeah, I'm pretty confident that Dark Horse is going to release a Gantz leather-bound uh, print style. Just like it's they funny that you, yesterday, um, last mm-hmm. night, I added all of the Omnibus bundles into my Right Stuff cart. And I oh, was really? like, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it on the last day. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna go ahead and place that order because they're all in stock. Mm-hmm. And I have the first omnibus. Like, I have it to read. Um, but you know, I was thinking this morning. I was like, ah, I don't know. Like, I don't want to buy them. And then they announced the hardcover deluxe edition. Like, I would just kick myself in the foot. And because you said that, I think I'm gonna hold off. Yeah, I would hold off on it. If it, it, you know anyone else watching this, if you were kind of torn, like, oh, should I get you know Gantz omnibuses or something else? It's like probably get something else unless you really want to read Gantz because they're gonna go slow with the releases, just like they did with Berserk, Blade of the Immortal, Hell. Uh, I guess Hellsing wasn't that bad, but it's Hellsing was three. pretty fast. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I think that one's coming out for sure. Gantz, the next one's gonna be Trigun to kind of correlate with the Trigun and Stampede release, which I think. Was- oh, they and they did say, oh, well, you're not on Twitter. No. Somebody messaged Dark Horse on Twitter and asked them if they were gonna reprint the Trigun omnibuses, and uh, Dark Horse said to them in a reply. Uh, stay tuned for a big announcement of the Trigun manga in January. Oh, yeah, I saw that tweet. Yeah. I think we're gonna get a hardcover. Yeah, I there's think no that's gonna be. It. It's gonna correlate really well. Which with would the be, release. which would be 
be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It would be That's great. Right I would yeah. immediate buy for me. Yeah. And the other series I think they're going to do, because they tend to do three leather backs at a time, is going to be Lone Wolf and Cub. Uh, that's a shoe in to get a leather, you know, bound. They're really they're recently that, and they, that they did, yeah. And so I would be pumped if they did that. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be that's super I think happy. That's prime. They did the same thing with Blade of the Immortal. They omnibuses started to go out of print. They they start to restock the omnibuses, and then they announce a leather back. And people are like, oh man, uh, do I want my Omni still, or do I want to sell them to get the leather bound? And it was right. this big thing, and I was like, ha ha ha. I was too right. cheap to buy them. <laughs> right. So now, 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 I'm gonna, yeah, now I'm going to spend more money on the leather bag. <laughs> yeah. So, and people were like, nah, I don't want the leather bag. They don't even look that good, but they were lying to themselves 100%. Yeah. <laughs> they just were trying to justify Q and the Omnis. Right. <laughs> but like, but I uh, do. That's what's going to happen for sure. Those are the three times. So, I think that's great. And I also like that Dark Horse has decided this in the past month or two to go ahead and reprint those older series and then mm, continue the publications move. that great they move. dropped. I yeah. think that's a great move with the new community that's just started to come back up and mm. i think that for them to cash in on these great licenses that they just that just kind of died because the sales just weren't that great back mm. in the day but i think they're seeing the potential of it i can't think of any new licenses from dark horse that like i don't even know what dark horse is license licensing next year you know since they're in the comic book game too so like in the graphic novel game so who knows yeah um yeah i looked it up in the past and then i didn't decide to write it down because i i'm stupid and didn't think it was going to come up at all but you know they don't have anything new coming out that that was a yeah. note when i was researching it that's why i don't remember anything either but and the main thing that they're doing is they are taking their older series that they just stopped releasing out of nowhere and are continuing them which is excellent because which is great and that's yeah. confirmed and that's mm -hmm. and that already puts them a, a step up yeah it's just like fingers crossed for fate Stay night to continue on they stopped it like volume eight said they're definitely gonna release more and they never released anything else since 2018 and i was like yeah and they blamed it on the pandemic. I was like, the pandemic happened like two years later, man. <laughs> like, what right. the hell? You cannot blame that on the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, <laughs> and like, I oh. think that, so I think Dark Horse will get the, the stamp of approval from me if, mm. number one, they reprint the older series and they continue, which they've done. They've mm -hmm. announced that. And number two, we get one new hardcover, whether it be Lone Wolf and Cub, Cub Gantz, Astro Boy, something. Just give us one, and I'll mm -hmm. be totally happy. I'll be Dark Horse. You win the year. Great job. Yeah. You you do good. you did a good job. So yeah, yeah. I'd be thrilled if they if they release an Astro Boy hardcover. I just don't think it's gonna happen, but it totally could. Uh, I don't know. If you people viewers at home have been noticing this, but Osama Tezuka has gotten a lot of reprints recently, and so if Dark Horse does still own the licensure to Astro Boy, which uh, it seems like they may, uh, you know. They may even sell it off because they have too many other projects in the back burner, or they might take advantage of it and, and run off it like profits hoping. But I don't know. They could go either way with it, in my opinion, because they're both not, you know, they're both the right move. You know, right. there's no way they're not releasing a try gun hardback. I mean, that is essentially confirmed. And I feel like Gans, oh, yeah, you know, no, Gans if they, the if they. Way. You know, it would be really funny in January when they do this announcement for, announcement for Trigun if mm. they're like, oh, we're doing a, um, a fan book. I don't know. Something like really <laughs> dumb. Could you imagine dude. the uproar? Oh, dude, people would be pissed. Be it so would be bad. It would be bad. Yeah, it would yeah. be really bad. It'd be like they're like, oh, we're gonna reprint a uh, Trigun Million Bolts or something like that, which is just a bunch of short <laughs> stories. It's like, oh, you <laughs> fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah, god. No, I doubt it. It's it's got to be a hardcover or some sort of a re-release. Uh, I feel like there's there's no way it's anything else because Berserk is stopping soon. They're I think you know Blade of the Immortal. They're catching up on pretty quick too. Blade will be done by the end of 2023, or yeah. like the third quarter of 2023. It should be done. Mm -hmm. So like you know, in, in Berserk, I think only has maybe one or two more hardcovers left at this point because they just released two. volume 11 or 12. Yeah, and there's only like yeah 40 something volumes out right now. Yeah. So yeah, they're pretty much done there too. So it's got to be that. It's got to got to move in that direction. Something new for these other backs because they are really popular. I think they're making them a ton of money right now. I, yeah. The sales, like I went over earlier, don't suggest that. But I think it's because it's a bigger, fat stack of manga. You know, one sale is worth like three volumes of this. You know what I mean? So I think right. that's why. It's not moving as many units, but it's making more money to kind of counteract for that. Something right. that was very interesting uh, that I saw through a website called NPD, which is a very popular website in gaming. Um, 
manga has grown exponentially, which is why I think a lot of these moves that we're talking about is going to start happening. Uh, you know, between 2020 and 2021, manga has actually grown 160%, uh, which is absolutely wild. Uh, it was the 25% top growth print book in 2021 as well. And they've made, they were up. They didn't make this amount. They were higher than 2018 million to the previous year in 2021. So from 2020 to 2021, that whole year, you know, and they released this data in 2022. So it could be, you know, legit. They made 2018 million more dollars, not Two thousand eighteen million dollars. So on top right. of what they made before, more, yeah, more. It's yeah. like, shoof. Uh, not only that, but seven of the top eight fastest growing series have been either anime streaming on a major platform or um, you know manga. And this is the same year that Chainsaw Man premiered as an anime. The other thing that is pretty huge is the fastest growing manga series with absolute unit change, twenty twenty one versus twenty twenty. Chainsaw Man killed it. Attack on Titan is almost selling double. Demon Slayer almost selling double. Uh, you know, it, it goes down the list like that. JJK, Promise Neverland, Toilet Bound, Hanako Kun. You know, these main series that we keep talking about over and over again when I talk about these lists keep showing up because they are absolutely powering the the um, you know manga sales and community uh, as as the series continue to grow and this genre continues to define itself in our country. Uh, it is absolutely insane to me that such a media can kind of expand so fast that's been around for years. It's, I mean, over a few decades at this point. I think manga first entered the U.S. probably 1990s, maybe early 2000s. Uh, you know, it hit Barnes & Noble. And only now is it really blowing up since the pandemic, I, you know, in my opinion. And I think a lot yeah. of that has to do with, with you know, Netflix, TikTok, kind of taking over, you know, people's time, you know, because they're home, they can't go out. And I think it really caused for a huge surge of, of new, you know, people to check out these series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I think the wait. I think I think the staple of manga as a medium of enjoyment is here to stay. Is it mm -hmm. going to continue to grow like this? No, I think we're going to see in 2023, we're going to see it kind of die away a little bit. And I'm actually seeing that pretty apparent on the used manga marketplace i think the prices uh, i have found as i've been selling things as of late that i've had to put my resale prices pretty close to pre-covid levels to be able to move the series along because back in 2021 2020 you could put something almost at full retail and more. people would buy it yeah. it was crazy and i was like why would you buy a shonen jump title for more than five dollars a volume like that's insane because back in the day that you could i mean you would never put a shonen jump title over five dollars a volume you know on like the reddit manga swap mm -hmm. now now you're seeing people who post for seven or eight dollars a shonen jump volume they're not moving it anymore because that yeah. market is just tapped out. We're not seeing so, as many new people come in and all these new people already have the titles that, you know, that are popular. Mm -hmm. So we're, I'm, we're, the market's going to level out. But I think that the people who have came into this hobby in the last two years are here to stay. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's great. I think that's awesome to to see that grow in that retrospect. Yeah, I think that's a lot of supply and demand meeting each other back in 2020 and 2021 there was a lot of supply and demand issues but lately the supply like we were talking about earlier has really started to meet the demand um, not only that but the amount of series and the ability to keep up with each series is is probably impossible at this point when i was a kid in high school it was not impossible to have every series on the shelf at barnes and noble it was very achievable they had less than 100 titles on the shelf back then yeah manga was a was a bookshelf at Barnes and Noble. It was not yeah. a whole wall. It was not a whole section. It was one bookshelf, you know, front side, back side, all That's labeled true. alphabetically, A through Z. And and probably younger viewers are like, this guy's bullshit. And it's like, no, I swear to God, that's how it was. It used to yeah. be that way. It was tiny niche little community. And if you were in the manga section and you were in high school, dude, you were a fucking loser. And that was me. <laughs> 
with my mom. Okay, guys, with my mom, right there, as she's watching me look at Berserk, not knowing what beard, I'm beard, at. beardless, beardless man, manga boy. Like, yes. can I have some manga, please? Can I, just a crumb of manga, just a crumb, a crumb of Berserk, please, mother. I heard this new Tokyo Pop title's really good. Yeah, I gotta get that DNA angel. <laughs> oh man. That's a series that that was actually huge back when I was younger, and that was one of the few shoujo titles around, if I remember right. <laughs> that was that was those were the days. Those were the days. But yeah, yeah, you know, it's an interesting place that we see ourselves in nowadays. You know that that manga has now even taken over the comic section at my local Barnes and Noble. I remember when I would go in, and there would be shelves and bookshelves and walks of comics. Now it's not that way at all. In fact, even no. most comic shops are, are starting to take up a lot of manga, statues of anime characters, and things like that. It's just comics don't sell. And so this is a, a pretty big and clear indicator of where manga could go if the popularity starts to kind of teeter out. Is It'll start to turn into comics. And, you know, probably what I think will overcome it is is not manhwa, though, in webcomics, though those are very popular. But either new media or comic books are going to come back at, through independent publishers. It's hard to say which way it's going to go, obviously, at this point, because it's it's really looking into the future. But, um, you know, I think that's where it's going to go. I think it's eventually going to, you know, flip-flop back and forth between co American comics and, and Japanese-style comics. Uh, and I think independent comics are probably going to be up there, like Skybound and, and things like that, IDW, etc. Uh, so we'll have to see about that. Um but let's see here prof you know i know you say that you think that the titles are going to be kind of the same deal as as what we expect to be top sellers you know the usual jjk kaiju number eight spy family blah 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 blah. but what series do you think that we need to be on the watch for what is a dark horse that you think is gonna like take us by storm here like one that's been published this year that would is going to be huge in 2023 or something that's going to be upcoming that's going to upcoming, be upcoming upcoming series do you have any that come to oh, mind oh gosh oh, <laughs> you can say no, no it's to, okay <laughs> i have to look it up i have to look you know and like i yeah. know what's coming out but i just don't you know i can't remember off the top of my head mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. oh you, you know, know what's going to be big i know i know what's going to be big march comes like a lion yeah. from Dunpa. that was going to be Absol fine too <laughs> absolutely march comes in like a lion now whether Demba is going to release it is at this point i just don't know um, i know i saw i got delayed i forget who i got delayed it. again yeah, i, think I it mean it's Tony, been but, two yeah. years it's been two years since they actually announced it they're like hey we're printing this that was two years ago we still <laughs> haven't gotten it this series is complete i mean it just doesn't yeah. make sense what I, do they I even have to do the, at this point <laughs> what do they have what to do except put the do? put put the i'll even i'll go to dempa and i'll put the glue on the binding and i will do it myself i will be the good chinese boy chinese <laughs> chinese factory worker okay i'll do it myself if that means we can get march yeah. comes in like a lion but yeah, yeah i don't i don't i i don't get it but i'm glad that we have it in mm -hmm. english i'm mm -hmm. very glad that we have it in english yeah uh, that's a that's a big title which i feel like is just old enough that a lot of people who are entering this this demographic this genre of media haven't actually you know been able to experience quite yet um but once it hits and they experience it for the first time it's going to blow up uh a few of us older um readers and viewers of anime are going to recognize that title pretty much right away because when it came out through the anime it was huge it blew up like crazy and i expect the manga to do the same with this newer crowd i think it was to dempa's um, benefit to actually kind of delay it a little bit more but at this point it's starting to be worrisome it's it's kind of gone too far uh you know and it's 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 a pretty short series it's not that long but still it is just absolutely insane to me that they haven't you know released this series that they've been talking about for for years now it's just like right is this even real did you guys lose the license or something what happened right Hard so like say. i think that one's gonna be big marsh comes in like a lion i'm kind of looking at a list right now a condition mm -hmm. called love which is a big critically acclaimed shoujo that's gonna mm -hmm. be a big one mm -hmm. um they've got all the toski fujimoto stuff like the like <laughs> one chapter comp com compilation volumes yeah. so we know like those that, are gonna blow I, up that's that's obvious. yeah i i <laughs> actually just canceled my order for those actually like what? last week Why oh i don't want 
No, I don't want them. I don't. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't care about Chainsaw Man. I'm not a big Chainsaw Man fan. I gotta reread it again. I told myself I was gonna reread it because I read mm -hmm. it volume by volume, and I didn't. You know, <laughs> that I, was my I, next I, question I was, for you. <laughs> that is not the way to ingest Chainsaw Man. You gotta no. read it all at once. It's, so it's a I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it again. But it's not my favorite cup of tea, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. Marmalade Boy Collector's Edition. That's a big one. The big critically acclaimed shoujo title um, that was out of print for a while. That's coming back in print. Kind of reminds me a lot of like the Rumiko Takahashi uh, new collector's editions, stuff like that. Like I definitely want to support that. I think that's going to be big. Mm -hmm. um, let me think if there's anything else. If you jump in here, if you, you know. <laughs> something I think is going to blow up pretty quickly. And it's probably one that's not even in your radar. Is something called Dark Gathering. It is obviously a Shonen Jump title, you know, duh. Uh, this series, I believe it was on Jump Plus, but I'm totally just spitballing here about that. Uh, it's about a girl who's an unwilling magnet for supernatural and ghost hunting. Um, and she joined forces, forces, forces with Japan's most terrifying and dangerous spirits. So it's a bit of a flip on the genre. You know, normally you would see these characters, you know, team up with a character who is good fighting these spirits, but no, she's actually teaming up with them. Um, and Keitaru is a ready to stop living as a shut-in. He's starting university. He's re reconnecting with his childhood friends. He's taking a tutoring job. And he's not messing around with ghosts anymore. This is the summary. At least that's what he thinks until he finds out an elementary schooler he's tutoring is an occult-based genius who is hunting down dangerous ghosts and won't stop until she's found the one that took her mom. So it's an interesting, um, you know, title and, and a, um, you know, twist of the genre, you know, instead of, she is hunting down dangerous spirits, but she's also, you know, uh, joining forces, uh, you know, to capture them as well. So it, it should be an interesting title. It's actually starting to blow up pretty big in Japan. I think that this series isn't too far along, and it's got an anime already announced, which is exceedingly fast. It, it's I can't even believe it's already got one. I don't I don't think it's even past like ten volumes yet. Maybe it's close to uh, ten, but really not too too much. Um, yeah. You know, another series that I think is going to be pretty huge, which is uh, actually kind of being forgotten, I think, at this point, is called Demons of the Shadow Realm. And I know I'm talking a lot about these spirit mangas, but this is actually the same creator as Full Metal Alchemist, Hiromu Arakawa. She is uh, really, yep. Oh, I didn't even series. know that. See, there we go. It's called. Demons I didn't even of the know Shadow that was Realm, being. Oh, well, one, fantastic. I'm coming out then. in April, at least you know for now, by Square Enix. Uh, quick synopsis, deep in the mountains under the watchful eyes of the two stone guardians lies the isolated Higashi village. Unlike some of its residents, young Yuru is content to live out his days foraging and hunting in the nearby woods. But Yuru's ide idyllic life changes forever when Higashi village comes under attack. Amid this chaos, the young man is whisked away and forbidden to return uh, to the only home and family he's ever known. To ensure his safety, two statues who wants to go over to the village have um, joined to fight the divine left and right. Uh, Yuru soon discovers commanding these demons is his birthright, but after losing everything clear to him, he, will he be up to the task uh, uh, of unraveling this conspiracy, tying him to his twin, uh, Asa, to a prophecy that threatens the entire world? Uh, you know, this is a very generic sounding title to me, but because it is the author of Hiromu Arakawa, I expect it to be anything but. I think this is going to blow up I think once people realize that this manga is coming out this year, because again, it got announced last right, year. Right, I didn't There's even. A lot of I didn't even know. It, but I don't think right, anybody even knows it's coming. I, I think it's, yeah, it's totally I didn't even the know. So that's that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's uh, a huge one. Some some other ones, just and I'm not going to name any synopsis. I'm just going to just name them off. K on yeah. Shuffle, which is a spinoff of K on, which is fantastic. We have Saving Eight Hundred Thousand Gold in Another World for My Retirement. That was a big out of print light novel. I think it's getting a manga adaptation. Boys Abyss is a drama thriller manga that's super super dark. We also have down here. We have oh, the Toilet Battle Nakaku box set. That's that's a reprint. Um, let's see. What else do we got? Uh, oh, A Business Proposal and The Horizon from uh, Ize Press. Those are going to be really, really big. Mm -hmm. and, and we have Homunculus, the uh, omnibus of Homunculus that's going to come out in June. That's a big one. I'm very excited for that. That's a, that's a very nice print that we're going to get. That yeah, one. Homunculus is another one I forgot that was coming up this year that, you know, I think is going to really propel EZ Press. Homunculus has been a killer. Um, if you guys didn't know, I, I, I work very closely with the self community, and it is one of the most requested titles in our community. People go in and they're like, oh, I'm going to print Homunculus, and we're always like, 
yeah, people have already made like that copy a hundred and three million times. You know, it exists right. and it's so popular. I can't imagine that series not selling like gangbusters. Obviously, it's not you know being hosted anymore because of that fact that it's coming out. Uh, but it is it is a, an indicator for me that I think it's going to blow up big time because brr, that series is insane. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no question. That's about it. That. That's that's all I can see on this list here. That's going to blow my mind uh, yeah. from when I'm looking at this list. So very yeah. exciting stuff. Very, very exciting, exciting stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's going to wrap it up here, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Prof, any last words, any last remarks before we go? No, I think it's going to be a great 2023 for manga with publishers finally catching up on reprinting some older series it's a great time to be a manga fan it really yeah. really is between you don't have to fight to get your prints anymore which was just a terrible two years but i think now everything is leveled out where everybody can get what you want at a very timely manner so oh, yeah absolutely. it's gonna be good absolutely i think i think i agree with you 100 i think manga community is only gonna get more and more spoiled as these years continue on for the for the next foreseeable future uh, we'll probably start we're to only going to complain and we're going to complain more and more. Absolutely. I mean, if, if us two can just talk about manga and just, you know, geek out about it for hours on end about just yeah. the future of manga, you know, it's going to be good. And, you know, we did some research into sales and tried to figure out these trends of, of things going on to it a little bit earlier on. And, you know, a lot of these titles we can kind of predict, but even the ones that you wouldn't think of coming out that are coming out are still going to be huge. I mean, they, they are so looking forward to them. You know, great authors coming back at it. Series earning now, which are going to start to, you know, teeter the sales first cap of the teeter them, but it's a fantastic year. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe to Prof Otaku's channel, my channel, if you enjoyed this content. Uh, we'll be happy to see you guys in the next video. Until next time, have a good day. Bye-bye. Take care. Mm -hmm.